because of the CPI, we actually saw what could be a crack in this big bullish run. And now we're getting that hip fire next move up, which actually the VIX told us that yesterday. I'm sorry I didn't put out a video for that, but the VIX was up by more than 10%. And you know that that means there's an 85% chance that we're going to see some kind of green day over the next two trading sessions. So we're getting that move up. And before we get into that technical analysis for the SPY queues, Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, and AMD, I first wanted to talk about what a Fed speaker said this morning. So this morning I tuned into a Fed speaker and I was really interested in his speech because even though we saw a tick up in inflation, he was still bullish. And he actually said the phrase, if we see inflation tick above um, what is expected, it doesn't mean what we are doing isn't working. It is actually a good thing for us to see inflation tick up. And if you're confused by that, um, everyone kind of is. Pretty much this is trying to make a scenario where bad news is good news and good news is good news. So nothing can really tear down this market. And I want to read this statement one more time and read it exactly how he read it or how he said it. It would be like this. Well, if uh, if we see inflation tick above what is expected, it uh, it doesn't it doesn't um, it doesn't mean that what we're doing isn't working. It is actually uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a good thing for us to see inflation tick up sometimes throughout this process. Now, when you read it like that and you hear how he actually said it, and maybe I could go find the video for tomorrow's video to show you just how he said it, it doesn't sound like a confident statement. It sounds like some kind of cleanup work to keep the market from dropping like a rock off a cliff. And that's really what I think what was happening here. So um, the thing that you do need to know is if we are seeing inflation tick up when we are holding rates at where they are today, that is a very, very bad sign. And I want to make that very clear. Now we can get into the technical analysis. All right, starting off with the SPY, I know it is Wednesday and I wanted to give you guys those weekly expected moves early on in the week, but I was just very, very busy. I'm going to be making um, videos tomorrow as well and one for the weekend, okay? So we are going to be putting out more and more videos from now on, so make sure to like and subscribe, do all that good stuff. But if you didn't get those weekly ranges from my Patreon, which is down in the description, you can get them right now, okay? So 508.48 to the upside for the SPY, and then we have 493.88 to the downside for the SPY. Well, notice when this breakdown did happen, we actually came outside of that monthly expected move, which we mentioned, hey, 68% of the time we land back within that it, uh, by the end of the month, and now we see that crack down and we're heading back up towards it. So we'll have to see if this comes in as some resistance, if we're able to fill this gap maybe before we actually see another plunge lower. Um, we'll have to talk about that as we go into the shorter time frames. But for now, what we noticed was early on in the week, and we talk about this a lot, early on in the week, we got outside of the bottom of this weekly expected move. And 68% of the time, we do land back within um, these purple lines here by Friday close. So when we did see this kind of thing happening down here, well, all we really had to do was go to a 15 minute and we see, hey, there's some divergence on the MACD, there's some divergence on the RSI at the same time. We could see some kind of pop down in these levels. Now, if um, the SPY wanted to hold down lower and kind of reject this and come down even lower, that's when we can see more dramatic selling come in. But when we get that, that hip fire reaction back up, now we're kind of in a safe zone. Looks like we built some kind of cup and we didn't necessarily get a handle here. So if you wanted to be bullish with this, you really would have wanted a little bit more of a handle to head higher. And you can see on the five minute, we're going to go real deep into this. On the five minute here, you can really see there's not much of a handle in this overall cupping. So since there is no handle, you don't necessarily have that support. You have the opportunity for overbought conditions and divergences to tip you back over down into negative territory, starting some kind of negative trend. So if this wanted to go higher, it would make sense, right? We could say, you know, there's some kind of wonky head and shoulders here. We could say there's a cup with no handle, but it still could project higher. That would most likely be the bullish cases for this. The bearish case is we're actually going to see this roll over and get some more dramatic selling pretty quick. So I want to pay attention to that. The reason that we have to do bullish and bearish is because we have this gap left behind and we like to fill those within five trading days. OK, so we have to pay attention to that. And we're seeing a bullish move and we're getting Fed speakers kind of talking out of their ass, telling you that inflation going up is a good thing. So as of right now, if this wanted to break down further, uh, most likely we would be setting up some kind of dip down into this level and then see some uh, reaction up in here and we'd get, you know, something like this going on. 
to break down. And the bearish side was a little more complicated on the five minutes. So let's just do it real quick on the 30 minute here. The 30 minute, you'll notice that the MACD is just now getting into that positive territory. And what does that mean? That means that we could see that positivity really come back in. But if this wants to actually roll over into negative territory one more time, that means we're most likely going to test this low or go make a new one. And then that would be kind of solidifying our negative trend. And we talked about this in our last video, how this would break down from these levels up here. We said overall, if we did get some kind of move upward, we would see that start to break down, get some kind of pop up like this to create a head and shoulders. Okay, so this head and shoulders actually could break down. And if you measure this out, it's right around here. So if this wanted to reconnect and come down lower and then get a bigger reaction here, now we would be getting an even bigger head and shoulders across the board. Okay, we talked about this in the last video. This is how I overall saw the market breaking down um, at these levels. Um, now we did need some bad news in order for those divergences to play out and get into negative territory, right? But they did. We got that bad news with the CPI ticking up a little bit higher than what was expected. And now we're seeing that downfall. We'll have to see if this is able to play out or if we're going to fill this gap, or maybe this is some kind of trap and we're actually gonna head higher. The way that you're gonna know that is if we remain in positive territory. So be really, really cognizant, be looking for this to roll back over into negative territory before you see more selling come in. Cues real quick, those ranges for you, the upside would be 446.07, the downside is 428.11. And if you're wondering how well these ranges work when you get outside of them 68% of the time you land in, really, let's look at this monthly. Because right when we get to the top side of that monthly, we see that dramatic selling come in. And actually, this was before the event, right? So we saw that selling, we saw that resistance come in, then we get that bad news that pushes us down lower. Okay, so these really can be very, very useful to you. And if you want to get those for the individual stocks, and if I forget, if I can't put out a video on Sunday or Monday, um, you'll get those um, on Patreon every single Sunday. So go give that a click down in the description below because it really is a useful tool when to know, hey, I need to take my foot off the gas for this at this point this week. Um, if you were in this for like a short play, you would know, hey, maybe I want to take some off the table, take a little bit of profit because we do still have a 68% chance to land back within this zone. It's a very, very useful tool. Now, as we go further into the queues, we'll notice it did get outside of that range. We have that little 15 minute divergence down here and we see that pop. OK, so that is a very, very good short term trade to take. Now, when we were talking about the cues, it was pretty similar to the spy. We were saying we could make some kind of little head and shoulders over here before we go create a bigger head and shoulders on the overall grand scheme of things. Right. So this is overall how I see us breaking down. But it's kind of similar to the spy. There are some bullish things left. There are some gaps left behind. So we could go fill those or even test this high again uh, before we actually want to break down further, especially when the Fed is coming out with a bunch of speakers telling you that inflation is good and people are going to believe them. One stock that was not popping very high today was Apple. OK, so Apple was a little bit of a different story. And I have a two hour chart here. Um, the 30 minute really just looks like continued selling. So I don't necessarily want to show you guys that. But the two hour here does have the potential for a bullish thing to happen. We could be getting some kind of wedging in here. Um, and overall, what you need to pay attention to, this has not confirmed. But we are expecting this area right here to be some sort of support. This would be a very, very bad thing if Apple started to break below this trend line because it's been in it for a very long time. Now, this could be some kind of head and shoulders at this point to break down. That would most likely be our bearish case. But the bullish case here would be I have a divergence right here. I do have a divergence on the MACD. I do see that divergence on the RSI at the same time, and it is not, it, it's not as flat as it looks. It is a little bit up there. So you do have that divergence at the same time. And if this is able to cross, it has a good, good probability to get into positive territory and we could get some kind of reaction. So there is a bullish and bearish setup. I would say if I was bearish on um, Apple and I didn't start to break below here and I start to see this turn up, maybe cross over into positive territory, I would start to say, hey, maybe I need to take some shorts off the table and kind of wait for my next opportunity. Now, if I was very, very bullish and then we started to break below this, we see a retest and we break below again and we kind of see that continued negative trend. That's when I'd say, hey, I need to stop being so bullish and I need to wait for the next opportunity on the other side of the spectrum. It really does look like Apple is wanting to come down lower. And the big thing here is remember this weekly that we were talking about. We were paying attention to Apple on the weekly. 
uh, because it had divergences. It had some pretty steep divergences on the MACD and RSI at the same time at these highs. And we're noticing that it did cross. And if we do break below um, this trend line, we actually could be getting some more significant selling. We could get some kind of, you know, something like this. And then we just get that negative trend to kind of continue over time. Now, if you were paying attention to our videos when we get to Amazon, I want to give you a thumbs up and a big pat on the back. Congratulations if you did find this little bit of a trade. We were saying how there was a continuation triangle here and it looked like we wanted to break to the upside. We were just stating that this MACD behavior looks like we want to turn up into positive territory, which means more positivity. So thank you so much if you are subscribed and you found this information helpful. Make sure to turn those notifications on and things like that. But thank you, thank you, thank you if you are subscribed. Now we did get a big move higher, so it was a good trade, a good continuation from this triangle here. Um, but what happens now? Okay, so there's a setup here that I want you to pay attention to. We are in negative territory and we are setting up another, what could be a head and shoulders, right? We see this base down in here. We have a left shoulder, we have a head, and we are maybe forming that right shoulder. Make sure we wait for this to confirm, but overall you need to notice now we're in that negative territory. So if we wanted to break down from this level, we actually could cut through all of this pretty quick because there's not any price action in here. So we actually could see Amazon head down to like 160, pretty quick if we wanted to roll over from where we're at now. Now there is still potential for some bullishness. We did leave behind a gap up here. So maybe we do want to close that gap and form some kind of bull trap and then head lower. The big thing you need to pay attention to when um, we're trying to look for a top here is is this remaining down here on the MACD? Is it remaining in this negative territory? Are we going to see this continue in positive territory? That's when you know, hey, this most likely isn't the top. But if this wants to roll over again, then you have a very good probability to take out this base and start to head to lower levels on Amazon. Tesla has been seeing some dramatic selling ever since earnings, and it's kind of been just holding at lower levels. Now, we mentioned that there was a two hour divergence down here. And look what happened since we told you about that two hour divergence. We told you right around here and look at this move up. We got like a like from 183 all the way up into 194. So almost a 10 to 12 point move. Um, on Tesla right now. And then we're seeing this start to come down. Okay, so we're starting to come down. We're in that negative territory again. So if we wanted to treat this like some kind of flagging and roll over, we most likely will test this low. But there is a bullish thing here. Okay, there is a bullish thing and that would be another head and shoulder. So we are seeing some reverse head and shoulders that could lead to some upside in a lot of stocks. Now, what this would do is maybe roll over that daily. Okay, so we first want to show you this head and shoulders. Though. Okay, so the left over here, it's a left shoulder on the reverse head and shoulders. You got a head and we have a right shoulder forming. If we wanted to uh, break above these two highs here because they seem like good resistance levels, that would be very bullish. And we need to pay attention to that, especially as I pull up the daily because you'll notice we actually did cross on this daily here. But we haven't seen that necessarily big strength come in. So even though we did get that little trade with the two hour divergence, quick little trade there, good trade because it went up 12 points like the next two days. Um, that's a very, very good trade, but we need that this to start to get a little bit more price action going to the bull side. So if this is going to move up, I believe it needs to do it pretty dang soon because if this rolls over and starts to test this low, you do have that potential to make a new one. So I'd really like to see if Tesla wants to get bullish for this to actually break above this level and start to head higher from here, maybe filling this gap before we see some negativity because we're still away from that positive territory. So if we did see that pop, really wait for this to confirm that it's going to go further into positive territory. If this wants to get near it and then kind of roll back over, well, then you have a good chance to test this low. Go make a new one, even head towards something like a 154.71. Now, NVIDIA is not showing too many cracks on the daily here, right? We're just seeing this continued buying, riding that nine day moving average all the way up. We even saw that actually get tested as of today, and then we bounce right back. Now, the thing with NVIDIA we have to pay attention to is earnings is coming up. Earnings is on February 21st. That's Wednesday, February 21st. And what do we do on this channel? We try to stay away from stocks around their earnings. We don't know what numbers they are going to produce. Usually there's a big move for the day of any company's earnings. Um, so that's just something to pay attention to.
One thing I would like to say about NVIDIA is I don't think it is a bad stock, not by any means, but I'm just stating how do you really think this is the best place to invest? I, I would say no. I would say with everything that's going on with that Apple showing that divergence crossing on the weekly, I would be a little bit hesitant to, you know, be fully confident buying and holding for a long time at these levels. And that's just something I wanted to say real quick. Their earnings have been good in the past, but with everything that is going on, especially if we have to keep these rates higher for longer with that inflation ticking back up, um, we could see something break in the system. And so if something breaks in the system, that can be very bad news for pretty much everything in the market, including NVIDIA. OK, so we're going to go into the shorter time frames. I'm just going to pull up a two hour. We're going to notice there was some divergences at these highs. We haven't seen um, selling really come in yet. Looks like people are kind of buying and hold, holding these this uh, at this time but we see this divergence here and it did confirm but it's pretty strong looks like we're getting some kind of cupping maybe we actually do see this get one more push higher i would be paying attention to the top side of those weekly ranges that i give out on patreon um, because we could be hitting really really high levels people getting really really excited before earnings which could be inviting some kind of sudden drop which i do believe a sudden drop is coming in the market and these fed speakers really just kind of came out and told you inflation's a good thing when it's really not. Just the last little thing on NVIDIA for this divergence that we do have on the MACD and the RSI at the same time. These two hour divergences do like to roll over those daily charts. So if we do get some kind of triple divergence and then we see that, the important thing is when will it get into negative territory? If we can get closer and closer to this negative territory, then we can start that negative trend. There is no negative trend at all right now. So we want to be very patient on NVIDIA because it looks like this thing could just keep going up um, until some bad news actually tips it over, maybe with earnings um, into negative territory. So it's all the way up here in positive territory. So I'm not really playing with NVIDIA, especially since uh, earnings are around the corner. AMD, we were talking about this consolidation. Looked like we were just kind of getting some kind of continuation triangle. We're seeing price get tighter and tighter, which just tells you, hey, a big move is coming one way or the other. Um, and it looks like as of right now, we are seeing that move to the upside. Now, I did say on AMD, I really was just leaning towards a test of this high. But we actually could see a good reaction because this did kind of extend for quite some time. Those buyers could be getting a little itchy at this point. And if they buy to the upside, we could see a lot of people pile in. So we could be making a new high beating out this one. But I'm still going to be paying attention to this one to the bullish side. The thing is, you're in positive territory on the MACD and you're around overbought conditions. So I don't think there's too much left in this move. Um, if we do break above this high, I'll be paying attention to my weekly expected moves, the top side of that weekly expected move to um, because that's all that options have priced in for the week for AMD. So pay attention to that. Now, if we do get some kind of fake out, maybe this does pop for a little bit tomorrow and then we see that just quickly reverse around and go the other way. That could be some kind of trap and we could be heading a lot lower. OK, so we want to pay attention to that and how this could actually play out is we could see some kind of sudden drop down into something around like 133. Um, that could take a couple of weeks to play out, but we could see a drop down to 133 and then we get some kind of significant bounce to get us back within this channel. Um, see that resistance come in and that would form some kind of big head and shoulders to break down further. You guys know that because of the state of, you know, the economy, everything and how we've really handled this inflation crisis, how much we pumped money into the system. We do need a deflationary event for things to go back to the way they were. And so we will most likely see recession, which might invite some kind of bear market in 2024. Now, this here was a big deal. These yields were a very big deal. And we overall told you guys that we are aiming for this spot right here, 4.362. We've been saying that for uh, it seems like a month and a half now, um, but we're actually up towards that area at this point. These things do take time to happen, um, but you'll notice as we do get into that positive territory, we get that crossing into positive territory and we see that come in. We see that big move upward, which means it should be putting a lot of pressure on stocks, but we're not necessarily seeing that the amount of pressure we should be seeing. We really should be seeing these tech stocks kind of act like Apple and see that really uh, downward pressure come in as these yields go up. Now, TLT, we're going to look at the flip side of this. TLT, we we're stating how um, this area here was really where we were looking for a bounce in the past. We were looking for a bounce in this area. We had a little bit of divergence there. We had a little pocket of 
um, price action. And then we had some right over here. So it was a good level to get some kind of support. We see that bounce come in, but now we're seeing the same thing hold. The signal that we've been talking about where TLT is just coming down and down, which could be considered the smart money. And we're still seeing the market um, really it was up in this area and then we saw that small dip down and now we're going back up. So we're still seeing this difference between the SPY and TLT, which could tell us there's a big difference between smart and dumb money right now, which we need to pay attention to what smart money is doing because normally they're the ones who are right. The dollar had this big breakout, got into positive territory, and that's where we kind of consolidated and then saw that positivity come back in. I do have this 105.65 marked off for myself. Um, just a little point that I'm paying attention to at this point. Now, how did this, uh, how could you have really seen this going up? Well, we do have this left shoulder. We actually got this consolidation kind of right before um, we matched this little area in here, but this still could be considered our right shoulder at that point. Okay, so we did have a little head and shoulders here, and that is starting to play out to the upside, right? So we're seeing that play out to the upside. Now, how high could this actually go? Um, well, let's measure that out for you. So how high could this really be going? Um, we could actually see us match these highs up in here. So we could be seeing a dramatic drop very soon. Um, even though we see some bullish setups at this point, that might be short lived. It might be some kind of trap because we're actually seeing the dollar have extreme strength and the dollar has been moving up for quite some time, but the market is also just moving up as well during all of this. So we're actually seeing the dollar move up while the market moves up. And these are um, in inversely correlated, right? So they're, they're negatively correlated, which just tells me, hey, there, there's something funky going on because how is the dollar going up like this and the market's going up with it? So that's just a little bit of a warning sign to pay attention to as these uh, important weeks ahead go by. The last thing we'll talk about is the VIX, and we were mainly just saying, hey, wait for the VIX to break out of this range, okay? We said it probably could come down a little bit lower, test the bottom here. It held up a little bit higher. We saw that gap up, and now we see that extension. Now, this bar here was up by, it closed at 13.63%, which means we do have that 85% chance for a green day on the SPY over the next two trading sessions. And guess what? Today, we actually did um, get that green day, okay? We're up 0.91%. Um, now, this could just be some kind of reaction down. What we'd want from the VIX at this point is to now confirm that is going to hold above that 200-day moving average. If we start to hold above that 200-day moving average, we can really see this start to trend upward. The important thing here, though, is the MACD is now in positive territory, and we could be seeing you know, little pops like this happen very, very soon now that we've broken out of this range. If we did want to see some more bullishness come in, I'm really paying attention to a two hour, seeing if this wants to kind of fizzle out and keep coming down and waiting for that to curl back up because we are in positive territory. I can just watch this MACD and once it crosses back up, I can say, hey, the probability is this is in positive territory. We're going to see some volatility and maybe the market's actually going to sell off. So this is just something you need to pay attention to in the VIX. And we are stating how we need to be aware if we start to break above this range. And that happened as of yesterday. The main takeaway here is inflation going up when we are in a rate raising campaign. And maybe it's not around like Christmas time when people are still spending a lot of money is still a bad thing. Do not get tricked by these people into thinking, oh, if inflation ticks up, that's a good thing. I don't know how in the world you could go on camera and say that inflation ticking up above what is expected during a rate raising campaign is a good thing and that just baffles me. But for the rest of the main takeaway, it is we're seeing some of those bullish setups, but it looks like those could just be traps at these high levels, even if we go up for the next few days in order to kind of get some people a little too bullish again at these levels before we see some sudden drop. You notice how fast the market sold off when we did get that CPI data, and I think more of that is to come. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for the congratulations on my baby girl. I'm going to be putting out more and more videos throughout the weeks. And I might be even starting some live videos very, very soon, at least on Thursdays. But I just really wanted to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. And thank you if you're a part of my Patreon. I really do appreciate it. So I hope you guys have all the luck in the world trading tomorrow. And I hope you guys have a good night. Peace.